We went to Afghanistan first because uh, it is the central front, uh, front in the war against terrorism. That is where the 9-11 attacks were planned. And today in Afghanistan and the border region of Pakistan, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban are mounting a growing offensive against the security of the Afghan people and increasingly the Pakistani people while plotting new attacks against the United States. <clears throat> the situation in Afghanistan is perilous and urgent. We must act now to reverse a deteriorating situation. Uh, I called uh, over a year ago for additional U.S. troops to be placed in Afghanistan, as well as more non-military assistance and more support from our NATO allies. Uh, and I'm glad that there's a growing consensus back home that we need more resources in Afghanistan. Uh, we should not wait any longer to provide them. We also need a policy, uh, as both Jack Reed and Chuck Hagel mentioned, uh, that compels Pakistani action against terrorists who threaten our common security uh, and are using uh, the Fatah and the Northwest uh, territories uh, of Pakistan as a safe haven. Uh, and we have to do this at the same time as we deepen our relationship with the Pakistani people and the recently elected democratic government. Uh, together, I believe we have to succeed in taking the fight to the terrorists in order to protect the American people as well as the Afghan people. And to do that, uh, we're going to have to support lasting stability for Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, as well as economic opportunity for their people. In Iraq, we reviewed the gains that have been made in lowering the levels of violence thanks to the outstanding efforts of our military, the increased capabilities of the Iraq security forces, the Sadr ceasefire, and the decision by Sunni tribes to take the fight to al-Qaeda. We also noted that the political reconciliation and economic development that's necessary for long-term stability in Iraq continues to lag. Uh, there is security progress. Uh, now we need a political solution. The message we heard from Iraq's leaders is that they're ready to do more, uh, and they want to take more responsibility for their country. And I believe that the best way to support Iraqi sovereignty and encourage the Iraqis to stand up is through the responsible redeployment of our combat brigades. Uh, I welcome uh, the growing consensus in the United States and Iraq for a timeline. My view, based on the advice of military experts, is that we can redeploy safely in 16 months so that our combat brigades are out of Iraq in 2010. Uh, as President, I intend to work with our military commanders to assure that we redeploy out of Iraq carefully uh, with uh, the safety of our troops in mind. And as I've said over the last two years, once we redeploy our combat brigades, uh, we're still going to retain a capability to protect our personnel, to target terrorists, and to train Iraqi security forces if there is political progress. And speaking with Afghans and Iraqis, the U.S. military and civilians, uh, we all three of us, I think, were struck by both the peril and the promise of this moment. If we responsibly end the war in Iraq, we can strengthen our military, step up our efforts to finish the fight against al-Qaeda and the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, and succeed in leaving Iraq to a sovereign government that can take responsibility for its own future. In short, we can seize this moment to make America more secure, to focus on broader challenges like defeating terrorism, reversing the spread of nuclear weapons, and achieving true energy security, a challenge that I will discuss, among others, uh, with some of our closest friends and allies uh, in the days ahead. 